So the first thing I would look at is how far does your shortest iron go in your golf bag? Now that gives me an indication of where we need to start the wedge setup to begin with. What I see a lot of on tour is that guys will leave bigger gaps at the top end of the bag because they can dictate a better pitch number with a longer golf club. They can draw it to get to a number, they can fade it to get to a number. Down the bottom end with the shorter golf clubs, they have set fields and that is where you, they will pitch at a constant number rather than drawing or fading a wedge, which is very, very difficult. So we need to have a wedge set up down the bottom end of the bag to hit those numbers consistently and more effectively. So obviously you have your pitching wedge, your gap wedge, your sand wedge and your lob wedge. Now they're obviously your conforming bag, right? And if you're on tour, a lot of the guys on tour will play the pitching wedge, the gap wedge, the sand wedge and the lob wedge. Now, the only difference is, is that these guys will have these numbers that they need to hit. So although a wedge may say 50 on the bottom, that is in there for a, a different shot. It doesn't mean that that guy will always play a 54 and a 58. Now, if I look at my golf bag and the way I have my wedges set up, I have a 50, which is actually bent to the loft of 49. Now that for me goes a set number and I can also play my field shots, which go another number. And then I drop down into my 56, which is my sand wedge, which is actually at 55 degrees of loft. Again, the same reasons as the 50, which is at 49. Now, my lob wedge is the only time I will use that shot is if I've short-sided myself or in a bunker. So I want the maximum I can of loft on that so I can just hit those shots in a, in a very standard setup. So my 60 is actually bent to 61. So although my golf clubs will say 50, 56 and 60, it's definitely worth checking with your fitter how far do these wedges go and how far do you need them to go while still keeping in mind with that light launch, spin and that carry number which is very, very important in the scoring clubs. So bounce on the golf club is something that everyone wants to know and everyone thinks they know about. But bounce is the angle that is created from the leading edge to the trail edge of the wedge. What I mean by that is the leading edge to the trail edge which is on the back of the head. Now, what that does, the higher the bounce, the higher the leading edge will sit off the ground. And the, likewise, the same. If you've got a lower bounce golf club, the leading edge will sit tighter. And so a lot of guys on tour will use low bounce golf clubs because they play on tighter fairways, shorter grasses, and co golf courses that are in, in better condition. Now, with you guys, when you're playing away from these golf courses, we're playing in the winter and it's, it's a little bit hairy everywhere and it's not quite in pristine condition, we really need to think about bounce because bounce is such a key thing. Not a, just A for strike, B for the ball spin and control, but also it's just about repeating that carry number and how your golf club interacts with the turf and gets into the turf and out of the turf more successfully. So for 2021, the experiential teams are gonna have a select fit wedge head in the lob wedge. So what that enables you to do is actually test all of these wedge shafts, which we've not been able to do before. So when you're testing these wedge shafts, look at consistency of feel, consistency of flight, and consistency of spin. The fitter is there to help you and, and realize what is the best setup for you. So this is a great thing for us. Play around with lie angle. Don't stand there in full posture and hit shots that you wouldn't hit on the golf course. Work on those feel shots and really test the wedges and fit for its paces.